Hello, and welcome back to The Vault at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library in Springfield, Illinois. I am James Cornelius. I'm the curator of the Lincoln Collection. Today, we have a three-part story to tell about Abraham Lincoln and slavery and his desire to end slavery with one of the great historic documents in American history. In this case, the story begins very close to Lincoln personally here in Springfield, Illinois. We're about 90 miles from the border of Missouri. This is an 1841 wanted poster, reward poster, for a family of slaves who had escaped from Missouri and were thought to be hiding out in the Springfield area, a woman and her three children. This is a unique copy of it. The small print at the end tells us something very interesting about the battle, which of the battle over slavery, that is. Namely, the person who was hiding them has taken a copy of this reward poster and printed his own message at the bottom saying exactly where those people were hiding out or had been because they'd gone farther north by the time this was posted around town. They were staying in a house four blocks from where Abraham Lincoln lived. We hoped that they made it north to freedom. Lincoln was aware of this problem. It was all around. In that case, it was a woman and three children soon joined by their father. This is an unidentified boy wearing a Union Army uniform during the Civil War. We don't know his name. We don't know where this was taken. But here is an indication that during the Civil War, as the Union troops advanced into the South, they were freeing slave adults and children, some of whom, males anyway, joined ranks with the Union forces. And this is part of what Lincoln was trying to do. He had freed the slaves in rebel territory by the Emancipation Proclamation at the start of 1863. But that was only an executive order with Lincoln acting as commander-in-chief. It would have no legal basis. This child might not be free at the end of the war if only the Emancipation Proclamation were in force. So, a bigger effort began. And that was to change the United States Constitution to end slavery forever. And here is the Congressional Resolution signed by the congressman who supported that and signed by Abraham Lincoln and dated February 1st, 1865. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States or the lands under its control. Passed by Congress, signed by Abraham Lincoln. It then went out to the states for ratification. And when, when three quarters of the states had ratified it under constitutional law, it became the law of the land. Unfortunately, that did not happen until December of 1865. Mr. Lincoln was dead. But he knew that he had done what he could do to save people like that boy who had been set free at least temporarily by Union forces moving south. Several of the congressmen on their own initiative put their state after their name. They wanted to be identified as proud residents of New York or New Hampshire or Vermont or Illinois. Most of them did not. One is from Missouri. He was particularly brave. Missouri was a battleground throughout the Civil War. And it was, and it was a dangerous gesture to support the end of slavery if you were from Missouri. Very few of these people now are household names. In the same way that the Declaration of Independence from 1776 and its 56 signers are mostly unknown today. We remember John Hancock 
we remember the Adamses and a few others. Here we remember Abraham Lincoln. We remember Vice President Hannibal Hamlin. We might remember Schuyler Colfax, the Speaker of the House, who became Vice President under Ulysses Grant. And we ought to remember James Garfield, later President of the United States, who was a congressman at this time from Ohio. His signature is on here, too. He was assassinated 16 years after Mr. Lincoln was. This may be the only document in existence bearing the signatures of both James Garfield and Abraham Lincoln. This is one of three souvenir copies of the congressional resolution to end slavery that Lincoln himself signed and dated. There are other copies which Lincoln signed. There are other copies which someone signed for Lincoln in another hand. There are copies which do not include the congressional signatures. There are some which include only the senator's signatures. There are about 15 altogether, we think, that Lincoln signed. But there are only three of this sort that tell the complete story. The congressman who signed it, having supported it, having voted it through in Congress, and President Lincoln's signature and date. This document has been in the Lincoln collection here since 1941. The state of Illinois purchased it for the people of Illinois. But it was in very bad shape. It was very wrinkled because it is written on vellum, which is essentially calf skin. And so it was becoming very difficult to read. It was a little bit dirty. And some of the signatures were in danger of beginning to flake off. It was completely restored by the Graphic Conservation Company of Chicago as a pro bono gesture, a gift to the people of Illinois and to the people of the world so that they could come and see this restored and stabilized. It will go on display in the Presidential Museum from February 1st, 2012, on the 147th anniversary of Mr. Lincoln's signing this. And it will be on display until the end of May 2012, along with that $200 reward poster and something else that is going to be a surprise. And so we hope you can join us and see this great, great work that Lincoln did and the people of Congress did who supported him for the nation's history and for the people who had formerly been enslaved. We'll see you again soon.